ever tell you how I came to live at Barbary Lane in the first place? I read an ad. And you know what it said? You'll know if it's right for you. A series of novels by author Armistead Maupin is the inspiration of a new series coming to Netflix. Tales of the City will premiere this June. Please welcome to The Nine, Armistead Maupin, the series showrunner Lauren Morelli, and director Alan Poole. So I did watch two of the episodes of Tales of the City, and I really liked them. And one of the things that I want to let you know is you were uh, still very well known in this newsroom. When I said, when I told people you were coming in, people were very excited about you, Armistead. Oh, that's that's nice to hear. Well, what, what was it like? Area. Yeah, what was it like in the 70s when you were writing the article when they had a picture of your billboard, you know, in San Francisco, and I remember getting the Chronicle, and it was above the fold. They had it at the top line there because it became so popular. I mean, do you know that that feeling is still there? Um, it's, it's on a different level now. We've gone global with this, uh, with this series on Netflix, uh, and that's thrilling. Uh, I loved being recognized in town when it was going on uh, in the newspaper. We're watching the preview, and there's, this is a really big cast, uh, a lot of well-known names in this, in this show. And, and it deals with, for people who are not familiar, it deals with life in San Francisco, but it tells a story of people who are often not portrayed, which is the LGBT community. Uh, what is it like writing or being the showrunner for something like this? You have a, does it feel like you have a big responsibility? You know, I think I really followed Armistead's lead in that he portrayed members of the queer community with such humanity and um, really made their sexuality and gender identities the least important things about them. So I feel a responsibility to continue that. Well, it, you know, what, what happens is people are seeing, uh, these are just normal people who yeah. pay taxes, who have bills, who have relationship problems, yeah. which, you know, now is maybe not such a big deal. But in the 70s, Armistead, uh, it was a big deal to portray it, these lives, it right? It was a bit, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> the newspaper had to sort of turn the other way when I was doing it because it became so popular uh, as a serial in the Chronicle. You, you got pressure from people saying, hey, we don't, you know, some of the more oh, conservative yeah. people oh, don't I want to read about this. Letters. I mean, it was amazing at the time. Uh, but we've watched the world get better. We've watched understanding increase to the point that uh, newscasters say queer. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, you're the director of the piece. I really yes. liked uh, when I watch something now. I directed I, the first two episodes that right, you that, that you I watched. That's why you were so happy. I watched those, right? Yeah. Uh, I really do like the cinematography and you trying to include San Francisco in what I call real shots. I can yes. tell you were really here mm -hmm. yes. in San Francisco. It's not shot on a lot somewhere. No. Uh, so did you take care to get these shots in? Yeah, it's very, you know, you can't shoot everything in San Francisco because it's logistically difficult. So we made sure that we shot enough so that in every episode you really feel like you're there and there's a few sequences in which you're really out there and can feel the whole scene. I really love seeing the, the Safeway in the Castro District. Yeah, the Safeway, uh, that's a, uh, yes. That's everyone who lives in San Francisco, I'm a native. We love that Safeway. Right? And that and Safeway has a particular resonance in the books because it's where Marianne met Michael. It's right. It was kind right. of she a callback to a seminal Yeah, she incident. mentions that uh, right in the, the beginning there. Yeah. So when it comes to this show, it's not a, exactly a continuation of this series, but yeah. it's close enough. I mean, we do see uh, Laura Linney in it. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that you wanted to keep from the last uh, TV shows that you wanted to put in for sure? Yeah, I think we were really excited to utilize all the original characters um, while also kind of expanding the world. So what's been so important to us is to usher a new generation of yep. viewers into this. And so there's, there's a lot of new things for old viewers to experience. Um, but also we want to make sure that someone who might not have experienced Tales, someone who might be in their 20s, is really welcome to come in and that you don't have to have experienced right. the original. Well, you did a good job because I've been to some of the clubs, uh, you know, in the Castro and I, you know, when you when she walks in, uh, Ellen Page's character walks in and gets behind the bar briefly and goes back there. I'm thinking, yeah. yes, I know this. <laughs> yeah. I've been there. This is really good. Uh, Armistead, you have a whole crew of writers, I guess, well, not you, but your team has a whole crew of queer writers. Lauren does. Right? Yeah. There were 10 uh, in the room, uh, in the writer's room. So all the writers are queer. Yeah. All uh, of them. But it used to be, but back in the day, you would be you know, scrapping to get one LGBT writer, right? So how has that changed? 
it felt really important to me when we were hiring our writers to, it felt like this was the show to have them be all queer and to represent that being queer is not one experience, right? I mean, it is as diverse as you can imagine. So when putting the writers together, it felt like they should represent the, that diversity of experience just as our characters do. One I mean, little detail yeah. that I like. When they're at the flower shop and yeah. the guy pulls out his Apple Pay, yeah, nicely done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nicely done. Put in the appropriate sound effect, a little ping. So yeah, nicely done. <laughs> Armistead, I hear you're leaving us and moving to London. I am in two oh. days. Man, <laughs> I just got to know you. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I really do hope that you keep San Francisco in your oh, thoughts, my, even though you're I leaving. Am part and parcel of San Francisco and always will be. Um, and I put everything I love about it into my books and. Uh, and these people have kept the, kept the spirit alive. Uh, Alan has guarded this property for 25 years right. uh, as a producer. Um, so yeah, we're taking off, my husband and I are taking off with our Labradoodle, which is not an easy thing to do when you're flying to England. Right, I read he got the VIP treatment, but we won't go into that, we're running out of time. But <laughs> I, 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 wanna, I wanna thank you, Lauren Allen and Armistead for coming in. I think it's really important to have San Francisco and this you know, section of people portrayed as just ordinary people who have you know, drama and like we all do in our lives. So thank you for coming in. Great. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Sal. All right, we'll be right back with more of Mornings on Two after this.